Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum, Kane's Independent Media Productions. Today, oof, we're, we're getting into a contentious thing here, burying the beater, not burying the beater. I, I know we're going to start a fight, but here we go. I'm actually super excited about this because I had like a line in my life where I went from only burying the beater to really wanting to learn how not to bury the beater just for sound reasons and for versatility and style and stuff like that to the point where now playing burying the beater is actually tricky for me and it just got me thinking about how this is one of those things that it seems like everybody has an opinion about and they stand on that opinion pretty hard so rather than getting into an opinion here we want to kind of show you what it is, what it does, and let you form your own opinion. Now, of course, this is Sounds Like a Drum. We're focusing on a sound standpoint here, and a lot of people's opinions about this particular aspect of technique are grounded in sound. They can also be grounded in physics and ergonomics and the health of your body and things like that. We're mainly just talking about sound today because at the end of the day, that's pretty important. Like if the sound is better one way or another, or even just different, we need to know these things. I also wanna take a moment, kind of early in the video, to mention our Patreon account, it's sustaining us right now. This is a Patreon-funded episode. If you haven't checked it out, follow the link below. Check out the tiers. Check out the extra exclusive content on there. Sub-series, anecdotes, all kinds of things like that. There's just there's stuff from every episode on there that only patrons get to see. And it's also a way to make sure that you can keep us going here so we can continue to make this stuff for you. First things first, what does burying the beater mean? I realized that depending on your experience, these terminology things, you know, they can slip by. Burying just means that when you strike the drum, you keep the beater pressed into the head, maybe with the weight of your leg or standing on your toe, something like that. Not burying the beater or playing off the head means playing the drum more like you would maybe a snare drum or a tom where you use the beater to strike the head, it comes off and then the drum resonates after that rather than being sort of stifled by the pressure of the beater. For what it's worth, in my opinion, I find both of these techniques to have uses depending on the drum, the heads, the tuning, the situation, everything. I lean toward playing off more because it suits my style, my personal style, but just like everything else, is a time and a place for all of these things. What we're doing today is getting away from tuning or a lot of different variables like that and just using one drum with two different batter heads, a single tuning for each of those heads. We're not going to mess with that at all. And we're just going to basically demonstrate playing into the head, bearing the beater, playing off, and then how muffling the drum a little bit changes that so that you can make adjustments to the setup that you like to use. The first setup that we're gonna use today is a UV EMAT on the batter side. We're gonna use a ported EQ3 on the front for the duration. Inside the drum, we have our usual sandbag hanging out in there. It quells a little bit of the basketball -y overtone so you can really hear the behavior of the heads. And it also is not touching either of the heads. So in terms of traditional like pressure muffling like you'd expect with felt or a pillow, nothing like that going on. Now for me, I find the biggest difference in sound between burying and not burying the beater to kind of go right along with how much muffling is in the drum. And in the case of this head, how much muffling is built into the head or how much kind of like adjustment to the sound there is in the actual head itself. And with an EMAD, there's stuff built in that's gonna kind of focus the tone, make it fatter, get some of the overtones out of the way. But nevertheless, this is a head that's got nothing pressing on it, there's nothing stifling the resonance. So when you bury the beater, shorter sound, maybe a little more plastic in there, maybe a little less kind of boom. Um, both usable, but it's like it's kind of a big sound. And now, the normal thing that I feel like people often will do at this juncture to kind of tighten things up, especially if they want to be burying the beater in their playing, is to put some muffling inside of the drum. We're just gonna put a pillow in there.
as expected, much tighter sound, much shorter sound. The differential between burying the beater and not is not as dramatic. There's still a difference. I can hear it. Um, and I more importantly can hear it where I'm sitting, which does affect how you play. But this is good too. Um, it means I have some different kind of choices. It means that the feel of the drum is different, the projection, the tone and everything. But again, I don't particularly feel like there's a right or wrong here. It's a matter of which sound do you like, which sound fits in the music that you're playing. This is a good point to talk about, um, and this is actually super important, the idea that burying the beater is a sound and that playing off the drum is another sound. As you can see, when we put what is a fairly sizable amount of muffling inside of the drum, I mean, it's a, it's a real like a bed pillow, you can get the punch of burying the beater without burying it. There's an amount of weight in the leg when you bring it down hard and bury the beater that maybe volume-wise could have a higher ceiling, especially depending on your stature and how high you sit and things like that. But at the end of the day, in terms of the tone, um, you're not going to be married to the idea of having to bury the beater to get that kind of punchy, you know, almost like 90s, like alt-rock kind of tone, um, there's options there, and muffling is a big part of getting you there, particularly if you're up for trying a little muffling and then a little more, and kind of find the right amount for the way that you play. Now, for those of you that may be wondering about like why you would muffle a pre-muffled head because it seems redundant, again, a, a, a batter head with stuff on it that's built on to control tone in a specific way is worlds different from actually placing material inside the drum. These sounds are all valid. Don't be afraid to do anything with anything. Combinations of heads, combinations of muffling. Don't feel like you can't try any of it and understand that if you get a sound that makes you happy, that means it's valid. If it doesn't make you happy, change it. If you're happy, it's valid, run with it. Now, scheme number two. We are removing our EMAD, slightly pre-muffled head. We're putting a coated G1 on there. 10 mil, coated, nothing else on it. The plainest plain Jane head you could possibly imagine. And we're kind of going more in like a boomy Keith Carlock direction in here. It's tuned real low. The batter is tuned really, really low, actually. Like, it's just above finger tight, which <laughs> feels crazy with a single ply head. Um, and we raise the tension on the front a little bit to kind of get a little more tone. Ricocheting back, we're kind of tuning it more like a tom rather than the bass drum. This is a situation where at least my expectation is that burying the beater is both going to sound a little unruly and weird and more importantly it's going to feel really strange because you're stifling a lot more movement in that thin resonant unmuffled head. Now for my money, if I am tuning a drum like this with these heads, I would try my darndest not to bury the beater if I could help it. If it's really fast doubles in the middle of a fill or something, you know, <laughs> you do what you gotta do. But in terms of pocket and in terms of sound and tone, getting off of the head is definitely gonna get me what I want out of this. Now there are lots of prominent players um, I mean, from the top down, who swear by single ply batter heads on their bass drums for rock and for heavy music in some cases, but where they have specific muffling schemes to give them punchy round tone. And based on the people that I've talked to, this has to do with being able to be dynamic, where with a lot more muffling or maybe with thicker or more muffled heads, the lower dynamics are lost and the powerful dynamics sound great, but you have to power them out of the drum. So. Immediately with this, I want to find out what happens if I basically do the exact same muffling scheme that we did with the EMAD, but with this setup. Thank you. 
This is my favorite actually so far of anything that we've done today because it is super duper controlled. It feels really good. It feels really even and easy to play, but it is more dynamic than when we had a pre-muffled head and then also a pillow inside of the drum. It's worth noting that in terms of thickness and mass of the actual head itself, these two batter heads are the same. They're both 10 mil. There's not really more of anything except that on the EMAD, it has the ring around the edge. So in terms of the amount of air that we're moving and in terms of just the overall behavior of the of the head itself, it's not really that different. But just by virtue of getting rid of that mass on the head, tuning it a little differently and putting a pillow, the same pillow in there, now we have a drum that is both punchy and muffled, has some tone but not too much, fits in the mix really nicely, sits with the bass guitar really nicely, which can be an issue. They live in the same range. Um, and it's just really fun to play because fast stuff sounds good and slow stuff sounds good. Soft stuff loud stuff, it's all there. What all of this means for us is that there is, despite it being very muffled, a noticeable difference between bearing the beater and not bearing the beater in the sound. The feel of the drum is not different. And that's what's special about this particular scenario, which is that I don't feel like I'm losing feel or experiencing anything strange, whether I bury it or not. And when I talk about a versatile feeling setup in a bass drum, that's a lot to do with it. It's just the tactile feeling of playing the thing. Is it comfortable to just move how I naturally move and play the thing? And in this case, versus a pre-muffled head or going even further with, with muffling in general, there's still dynamics here and you have the option of a slightly wider tone if you stay off of the drum or really drive it home if you bury it. Now, much like a lot of things in instruments and music in general, we fall into tribal ways of thinking about these things an awful lot based on where we get our information, who we respect, who's saying that information, and us wanting to be on the right side of like, you know, drum history, basically. Like everybody else, I've struggled with this at different times. But what I know for sure at this point in my playing and in my opinions about music and sound in general is that intentionality matters more than anything else. If you're doing things on purpose in your playing because that's what you want to happen, I am ready to let just about anything slide. And in my, say, top five drum heroes that ever lived, I've seen every single one of them play off the head and I've seen every single one of them bury the beater. The handful of them that I've asked about it both said, I don't really think about it in, when they're playing. They think about it when they're practicing because the technique is important, but in the moment, they're just going for a sound. Whether you play metal or regular rock, whatever that means, jazz, modern jazz, fusion, hip hop, whatever, intentionality leads to integrity of sound, your own integrity of sound. And then at the end of the day, you can have what you want and not worry about whether or not it's right or wrong or whoever agrees with it. If it makes you happy, it makes you happy. All right, thanks so much for watching and coming along with us. I hope I didn't make anybody too mad <laughs> today. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you hear about all of our new episodes. We've got a lot of stuff coming out. We are super excited about the Symbol series. We're super excited about a lot of things happening on the Patreon right now. Please follow the link below. As I mentioned before, check it out. See if you can help out. Keep us going here in these interesting and unusual times. Um, and incidentally, if you haven't checked out our merch, this is my favorite. Go down below, we got t-shirts, we got hoodies, we got a lot of different logos. It's not just our, our branded thing. We, we feel a lot of different things that we wanna put on shirts and they're all down there. And uh, last thing is, it's not so much important to me whether you, uh, <laughs> avid watcher and listener, bury the beater or not. I want to know why you bury the beater or not. What brought you to that? As I said at the beginning, for me, it was a matter of I wanted to make a different sound and my friends were like, it sounds better when you don't do it. And I was like, oh, I got to learn how to do that. But what brought you to that? Was it style? Was it a certain drum? Was it the pedal setup that you use? You know, because it could be anything. And then addendum is, are you happy about it? <laughs> <laughs>